What's up, everybody, and welcome to Plant Strong Live. My name is Corey, and with me, I have the founder of Plant Strong, New York Times bestselling author, Rip Esselstyn. What's going on, Rip? I love that music. It gets me so jazzed when I hear that intro music for our Friday Facebook Lives. It's pretty fun. It's good to have you back. I know you've been busy uh, spending some time with the family uh, and, and conducting plant stock, which was uh, a smashing success. So congratulations on that. That was a lot of fun. Yeah, no, thanks. It was great to be back in Cleveland, you know, where I grew up. And we held, held the event out at a little place out in Northeast Ohio that's been in the, the family since 1912 called The Knob. It's the second highest point in Northeast Ohio and overlooks Lake Erie. And on a, on a clear day, you can see the freighters going across Lake Erie. It's really a magical place. And you know, I'm now 59 years old and I've been, I've been, I've gotten around and I've been to a lot of cool places in my life, you know? Yeah. And I can tell you that this is one of the most gorgeous, beautiful places in my, that I've ever been to in, in my life. And, you know, feel so fortunate to get home and get to hang there and hang with my mom and my dad and my sister, Jane, and then broadcast out to you know several thousand people for plant stock this year so it was great being home for 10 days and now it's good to be home i'm not technically home right now just if anybody's wondering this is my office this is the the plant strong world headquarters and behind me is kind of the the kitchen and uh where we do you can see back here right here i got all these bowls lined up we were doing taste testing for some new chilies Oh, that, wow. we're, that we're looking at bringing to market here. Okay. Um, super excited about yeah. some really wow. cool ones. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, you know, I am really excited to talk about fiber. <laughs> I think, <laughs> I, know it, I guess that makes me nerdy, right? I'm excited to talk about cool. fiber. <laughs> I, you know, honestly, I don't think there's a more exciting, sexy topic that we could be, that we could be talking about right now. And I'm, I'm serious when I yeah. say that. Really? Yeah. Really? Well, I mean, I know, I know during plant stock, we had, uh, Dr. Will Bolshevich, uh, you know, join. And I know that he has that, you know, I think it's the fiber fuel cookbook. Is that what it is? Fiber fuel cookbook. And this is, and this is, he's piggybacked this on the back of fiber fueled, which came out, uh, in 2021 and became a, you know, a sensation New York times wow. bestseller. And then this one is, has a lot of great recipes and also a lot more information on people that are having any kind of gastrointestinal uh, issues, dysbiosis yeah. and stuff like that. So Will, Will is really a master. And I think what's so cool about what Will has done as a gastroenterologist that specializes in, in trying to figure out what's going on with people with their Crohn's, with their, you know, um, ulcerative colitis, constipation, yeah. any kind of G, GI disorder. Yeah. He's basically, you know, shown that the number one thing that we can do to resolve these issues and dysbiosis, which is a big fancy word for just kind of some um, uncomfortableness and, and awkwardness that's going on in our guts is to eat a wide variety of plant-based foods. Yeah. And, you know, <laughs> that, so that's really uh, that's really it. <laughs> well, talk to me. Talk to me about how much fiber. You know, similar to like protein. I don't think yeah. people actually know how much they need to have on a daily basis. And there's all these calculations and everything else. But the bottom line is, is like there's different types of fiber. Uh, how much are we supposed yeah. to have? Yeah. Like, fill me in, Rip. I don't. I don't really know all of that stuff. And I'm sure that a lot of people might have some questions about that, since that's our topic today. Yeah. Well, let's let. Go. Great question. Let me take a step back then and just let people know that, and I'm sure everybody knows this, but plants, I'm um, sorry, fiber is really only found in plants. Okay. Right? And specifically, we want to be whole plants. And the reason why I say that is if you have a refined like bread or, or refined pasta or white rice instead of brown rice, what these manufacturers have done specifically is, um, let me, so there, if you look at, let's say a, what a, a whole grain looks like, it's got yeah. the, the bran, which is the fiber filled outer layer, layer of the whole grain. Then in the inside, you have what's called the endosperm, 
which is kind of the, the, the starchy, fluffy inside that most breads and pastas are made from. And then you have the germ, which is kind of like the seed in the inside where it's just nutrient packed. And so in all these processed and refined grains and breads and pastas, you remove the bran and the germ that have the most nutritional integrity, the fiber and all the vitamins and the minerals. And so you're really getting kind of a, um, you know, a, a, a poser of sorts with just the endosperm. Yeah. So we want it to be consuming whole plant-based foods that have the fiber intact and all the vitamins and the minerals and nutrients. Now, there's really no, no fiber found in animal, animal foods or animal byproducts. So meat, dairy, eggs, you know, ice cream, cheese, forget it. There's, there's, there's no fiber whatsoever. And fiber is a type of carbohydrate that cannot be broken down in the small intestines of human beings. And there's different types. You have soluble versus insoluble fiber. And so a soluble fiber, Corey and everybody that's out there, dissolves in water. Okay. However, an insoluble fiber can't dissolve in water. Then you have like a viscous versus a non-viscous type of fiber. And a viscous basically becomes gummy when mixed with water and a non-viscous doesn't become gummy. And then you have a fermentable or non-fermentable type of fiber and a fermentable one, basically bacteria can ferment it to extract the energy. So that's just a couple, you know, examples, but there's like literally inside the soluble and insoluble and viscous and non-viscous and fermentable and non-fermentable. There are hundreds of different types of like, you know, iterations of these different fibers. Yeah. But what we are discovering is that fantastic gut health is predicated upon a diverse amount of fiber in your diet. And then that will then determine the diversity of your gut microbiome that is now we're learning it's the eighth wonder of the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like truly the eighth wonder of the world is fiber and what it can do to produce a, an incredible gut flora. Now, Corey, there was this a really extensive research study that was done about three years ago. It was called the American Gut Project. And what they did is they analyzed stool samples from over 10,000 human beings from around the globe and they discovered that the number one factor for gut health was the amount, I'm sorry, was the number of different plants that people were eating in a week. And they found that 30 or more is kind of like where we want to be. That's our goal. Plants? So 30 or more different types of whole plant-based foods over the course of a week. So look at, I mean, you know, lentils and black beans and pinto beans and white beans and, and oats with your oatmeal and then hemp hearts and chia seeds and, uh, um, gosh, um, let's see, you know, farro and, uh, brown rice and barley. And we even count, you know, we, we even count herbs and spices in there as well. Like, you know, yeah. basil and oregano and, uh, and things like of that nature. And so, what you'll be amazed is 30 may sound like a lot, but over the course of a week, it is absolutely super simple. And, yeah. and, and, and it's something to get really excited about too, is if you're just focusing in on the same thing for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, let's, I'm asking you to stretch a little bit and get a little bit more diversity because of what it can do for your, your gut microbiome. So I, let me just sum it up with this. And then I want to talk a little bit more about my personal experience. So more plants every day, every week equals more good gut bacteria, yep. more good back, back, more good gut bacteria equals a stronger immune system and a stronger immune system equals a healthier and more vibrant life. Yeah. Right. And I find a lot of people, they try and overcomplicate everything here and we really don't need to. So um, what I would love right now is, so let me tell you, so in my first book, The Engine 2 Diet, I asked people to write down everything they were eating every day so I could make course corrections and tell them where they were messing up. And I had one lady in particular that said, 
rip. And, and, and this first pilot study was 28 days. And she said after two weeks, her lazy bowel syndrome that had, she had been diagnosed with lazy bowel syndrome by her, you know, her, her expert family, uh, family physician went away. And she was, she went from literally going to the bathroom once a week to going to the bathroom once a day. And she said it was one of the most magical things that, you know, had happened to her yeah. over the course of the last decade. And so lazy bowel syndrome, no longer. So if there's anybody out there that you've been diagnosed with lazy bowel syndrome, I can bet, I'll bet you dollars to donuts that if you start doing 30 or more plant-based foods per week, all of a sudden that, uh, that lazy bowel syndrome will go away. This, the third book that I wrote, The Engine 2 Seven Day Rescue Diet, it was interesting because I asked everybody in a before questionnaire, I said, what are the number, what are the top three ways that you get fiber in, in, uh, in, into, your, into your body? And the number one answer, Corey, Metamucil, right? Oh, wow. Okay. Which is a supplement. Number two was, you're not going to believe this one, gummy bear fiber chews. Come on. And then number three, uh, three was fruits and vegetables. Okay. And, and if I could get best to show my slide of the standard American diet. Yep. Yeah, we'll pull that up in just a second. I, I, oh, yep. there it is. Wow. There it is. So what we have discovered, Bess, Corey, everybody that's out there, is that 97% of Americans are deficient in fiber. They're not getting the recommended daily allowance, which um, uh, I'm going to ask Bess to pull up the next slide in a sec, but not quite yet. But you can see here that if 88% if of what Americans are eating come from a combination of processed and refined foods that have had the fiber stripped of them, and the other 35% is coming from animal-based products and byproducts like red meat, chicken, fish, pork, and then dairy products that have zero fiber. And 12% comes from plants. And we, we know that of that 12%, half of that 12% is coming from French fried potatoes. So really only 6% is coming from whole plant-based foods. That it's little wonder that the number one nutritional deficiency that we have in this country today is lack of fiber. And the number one gastrointestinal tract issue that we have right now today is constipation. Yeah. And, and, and hmm. plants are the answer to all that. And, and constipation is just one of many things that it can help with. Yeah. So if I could get best to show the next slide. So hey. you can see here. Yeah, go ahead. Well, we're getting a couple like really big questions I want to fly through. Is that okay? These are just really quick. Yeah, is that cool? Sure. Okay. Yeah. Best, best take that down for a quick second. Um, what the heck is lazy bowel syndrome? Um, that was a, that was a good one. I, I don't know exactly what that means, yeah. but this is a doctor term, correct? They're using this. So I think it's, I think it's a, basically it's a friendly way of telling your patient that the constipation that you have is not your fault. You uh, have a syndrome and it's called lazy bowel syndrome as opposed to basically saying, yeah, you know what? Let's take a look at what you're eating. Right. And I can bet you anything that what's going on here is you're not consuming enough fiber. But, okay. you know, remember when I wrote this book and, and, and I did my pilot study back in 2007. Yeah. Um, you know, maybe there wasn't enough as much information out there right now about, you know, the benefits of, of fiber. I mean, Will Bolshewitz, you know, gastroenterologist basically told me that he didn't even like stumble upon all this stuff until, you know, the mid 2015, 2016. Wow. So, wow. So, yeah. Well, and then there was one other one. Uh, someone, I think Cinda is a bit confused about what you said there. It's not that fresh fruit is not an acceptable fiber. It's quite, quite the opposite. Um, I think what Rip was saying when he was talking about that was when the American, when the American public was surveyed, it was the fourth source that they indicated as how they get their fiber. What we're saying is that it should be the first, if not. Oh, one of the oh first. yeah, that, you know, that was in that survey that I did for the, in, that actually was in the city of Mesquite, Texas. Oh, wow. And, and I was working with 70 of their employees for this pilot study. Yeah. It just goes to show you that most Americans, they, they're not reaching for the, the, the best sources of fiber. And actually, We'll get to this here. So if Bess could show that one slide. Yep. So yep. you can see here, 
the best source of fiber is beans. Beans, it's basically legumes. So it's beans, peas, and lentils. And most Americans are not even, not even like eating a serving of beans a day, if they're lucky. And like, just to give you an example, Corey, of how potent beans are with fiber, one can of, and this is like a, a 15 ounce can of black beans, pinto beans, you know, navy beans is 25 grams of fiber. Wow. Just one can. And, wow. uh, you know, so one cup is you're sitting at right around seven, eight grams of fiber. Sure. And then you can see nuts and seeds are also a wonderful source of fiber. Uh, and uh, and then fruit. I mean, fruit, for example, Corey, I probably eat six to seven pieces of fruit a day easily. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And so the average each piece of fruit is right around two to two and a half to three grams of fiber. I mean, just my fruit alone. I'm consuming 20 grams of fiber a day. Yeah. Now in Impressive. the middle column there, you can see vegetables. Uh, you can see, uh, you know, like carrots and bell peppers and stuff like that that are sitting at, and this is for per cup, just so we're, you know, let me level set here. All the green lines you see, this is per cup of this particular food. So you eat a cup of broccoli, you're sitting at, you know, two and a half grams, you, bell peppers, three, carrots, four. Um, and the RDA of, for fiber for men, it's 38 grams, and for women, it's 25 grams. And um, and the sad thing is that the average uh, fiber intake for Americans, this is men and women, is 16.5 grams. Wow. So, so wow. It, is, it is substantially lower than the recommended daily allowance of 38 and 25. Um, and so now let, let me tell you, Corey, about some of the things that fiber does and why, why we love it so darn much. Okay. okay. So yeah. when, it's like, so I think of fiber as being, it's like nature's scrub brush, right? <laughs> it's like nature's broom and it goes through and it just kind of scrubs all, you know, your, your intestines and your vessels. It does a phenomenal job of that. So it also, in, in, including like scrubbing it out, right? like Mr. Clean, it also, it draws out toxins that we don't want in there. It also reduces our cholesterol level. Like one, one food in particular that's phenomenal at doing this is oats. And you know that I'm like a horse. I think in my previous life, I was a horse. I think I was a stallion of some sort. <laughs> but I could, I could literally like, I could live off oats. Yeah. And, you know, just for the, the audience, oats are phenomenal. They're 18% protein, 18% fat. The remaining, um, you know, six, 62% is coming from complex carbohydrates. It's a great source of phenomenal source of fiber. It's soluble fiber. So it's the type of fiber that actually dissolves in water. It's also viscous. So it becomes gummy. And it just draws out and it, so it's a fantastic at bringing down cholesterol. Um, the other thing about fiber that we love, you know, Corey and, and team plant strong that's out there is it keeps us so darn regular. You know, one of my favorite sayings is that, you know, when you're eating plant strong, you are as regular as a Swiss commuter train. <laughs> and, and, when I, and I mean that, like for me, you know, and everybody's a little bit nuanced and different when it comes to, you know, bowel movements. Yeah. But for me, it's like I eat breakfast, bam, like 20 minutes later, you know, I got to go see a man about a horse. Lunch, right? I have, I have lunch 20 minutes later, bam, I got to go see a man about a horse again. I love horses, right? I'm a stallion in a former life. <laughs> dinner, dinner, bam, 20 minutes later, you got to go see a man about a horse. And the, it is the most fantastically easy, glorious bowel movements you can imagine here. There's no straining. There's no effort. And I like to tell people, my bowel movements are faster than my peas, right? Oh, that, wow. There you go. All right. You know? and, and, and then I'm going to get a little bit, you know, maybe a little too much information here. But you're wiping. It is so easy. And it is like just like, you know, one or two wipes and you're done and you're on with your day, right? Yep. Yep. So, and, and so I think so many people don't realize how your quality of life can be absolutely impacted when you're constipated, when your bowel movements are difficult, when you have to strain, when you have hemorrhoids, diverticulitis, 
Yeah. You know, you know, God forbid colorectal cancer. There's so many things that go on that can be addressed just with the simplicity of whole food, plant-based, you know, 30 plus different types of plants every week, right? Mm -hmm. Just like boom, boom, boom. Yeah. So I mentioned colorectal cancer and um, I had a phenomenal conversation with Dr. Michael Clapper on the Plant Strong podcast about a year and a half, two years ago. And he talked about how what happens is when you're eating the standard American diet, in particular, all these animal based products, Corey, they basically typically get caught up in your colon in the same spot. And they're there sometimes for days. Yeah. Right? And it just kind of rubs up against that colon wall, the endotoxins and some of these things that have no business rubbing up against the colon wall, the colon wall for any kind of extended period of time. Yeah. And this is why you'll see that a lot of colorectal cancers appear in the exact same location in, in people. And it's because, you know, I'll tell you when you're eating the standard American diet and you're eating all of these animal products and your transitory time is very, very slowed down. You're spending way too much time with these almost poisonous different products, uh, substances that are rubbing up against the colon wall. So to me, you know, fantastic way to help prevent colorectal cancer. Um, yeah. The other magical thing about fiber, Corey, I mean, it just gets better and better, right? That's <laughs> is right. It, is that it is phenomenal at helping keep it, keeping us satiated. And, mm -hmm. you know, we, we talk about this in, um, in our retreats, it's in all of my books, but the magic formula for uh, calorie density is water and fiber. And all these whole plant-based foods are loaded with water and fiber, which keeps their, their, um, their calorie density so low, which allows us to eat copious amounts and not gain weight. Right. Um, and that fiber, it actually combines with the water and it has this bulking effect in yeah. our stomachs. So it basically artificially, it fills us up and it hits all those stretch receptors and density receptors before we've had time to overload on too many calories. And that is the ultimate, one of the most beautiful things about eating whole plant-based foods that are loaded with fiber. Um, so that fiber plus water equals magic when it comes to bulking. Nice. Um, it keeps our blood sugar levels absolutely stabilized and regular. So think of it as you eat that, that apple, that orange, that banana, you know, uh, those beans. And it's like a big log that you're putting on the fire. Yeah. It now burns in a very slow and steady manner. Now, however, if we were to put on, you know, um, gummy bears or fried chips or, um, you know, white sugar, um, you know, white pasta, it goes up like hay that you throw in the fireplace. And now you don't, you get these big swings with energy highs and energy lows and sugar highs and sugar lows. So we love fiber and what it does to stabilize our blood sugar levels. And, you know, this is something that Cyrus and Robbie, our wonderful brothers at Mastering Diabetes talk about, you know, all the time. Uh, with diabetes, you know, you, we love um, whole plant-based foods and what it can do yep. for, for blood sugar levels. I'm going to go back to, to just for a second, because it, I think it needs a little bit more addressing. And that is when you're eating whole plant-based foods, it creates this, it has this bulking effect in our intestines and it's specifically in our colon. And this adds bulk and, and it brings water down there. And that equals something called peristalsis. And peristalsis is kind of this wave-like contraction motion that occurs when you have enough bulk in the intestines. And it's this, the peristalsis, the, the perios, the, uh, per, oh gosh, let me think. You have the sympathetic and the peri. Ah, anyway, yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. this automatic response that occurs in our intestines that basically pushes, right, the stools through our system in a very, very aggressive manner. And so when you're eating the standard American diet, you don't have all the water and all the fiber, you actually get these little pebbles, right? And there's no purchase that yeah. the, your intestines can get behind it. And so you have this huge lag time 
and you have people that are basically going to the bathroom once or twice a week. You know, I actually was doing a tour and I had a woman come up to me and said she hadn't gone to the bathroom in over a month, over a month. I mean, wow. this is wow. stuff that, you, you know, you really you don't know that it actually exists until you have people come up to you and talk about it. And then the last thing, well, one of the last things I want to talk about is, and we touched upon it, but when you're eating fiber, again, it creates the most magnificent gut garden that you could ever imagine with a microbiome that is producing all this friendly anti-inflammatory um, uh, byproducts, as opposed to when you're eating the standard American diet, and your gut is producing all these inflammatory byproducts um, right. that is not healthy. Or you're looking at me like we got something going on. Yeah. No, I've got I've got a couple questions which I'm excited about. Um, yeah. But I mean, this is all incredible information. Just a lot of people commenting about yeah. how they are really glad to be here and get this information. It's almost it's almost uh, you know a, a mini a mini plant stock presentation. I mean, uh -huh. yeah. I I love I love hearing about this stuff, and I think. One of the biggest things for me uh, when I was starting off, you know, eating this way, I mean, I'm, I've been plant strong for, I don't know, 12 years now, right? And so I think when I was starting out, it was just constantly being in the discussion and being immersed in this conversation to keep it at the top of your mind. And, um, you know, it, it's been it's been cool. There, there are there are two things before we get to the questions that I want to mention. Well, I, I have I have a couple more things I needed to discuss. I, right. I, wanted, I wanted to discuss and I want to make the big bowl. <laughs> oh, geez. Holy cow. So, all right. You, so, you, you tell me how we're doing for time. Yeah. Right? I mean, we're good. We try to keep them at 30 minutes and we're already at 27. But the truth is we have 95 people sitting here excited to watch. So well, how about, yeah, how about, well, I, 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 I'm, I'm happy to go for another 10. Fly through. I'll tell you what, fly through your three more tips. I really want to get to making this bowl. And then guys, if you're here, I'm going to give you two codes that you can use over at the store. One of our questions, people are like, where can I get this stuff? Where can I get this food? So <laughs> well, yeah. I'm going to let you know where to go and get it. But let's fly through. Uh, let's fly through uh, Raccoon Mama. What a great name. Okay. I want you to fly through your tip, your other tips. You go fast, though. Go I fast. I, I want to see you make this right. bowl. All right, yep. go. So, so friendly bacteria. I want you to know that as human beings, we have 37 trillion cells on average that, compro that comprise Corey Warren, that comprise, com comprise Rip Esselstyn and everybody that's out there. Roughly 37 trillion. You have 10x that number of bacteria that reside in your gut. And depending upon if you're feeding it whole plant-based foods loaded with fiber or animal products that have no fiber is dependent upon what kind of friendly gut you're going to you're going to basically produce or unfriendly that's inflammatory so yeah. with that i just want to say that one of the byproducts of friendly friendly uh bacteria that are chopping down on fiber are short chain fatty acids okay and this is like one of the new buzzwords they produce something called buter buterate and our body's ability to absorb minerals like calcium and magnesium is predicated on our these trillions of bacteria producing short chain fatty acids from the fiber we're consuming. And so when you're eating whole food plant based, your body's ability to absorb and to retain the calcium in those green leafies, in those beans and everything is enhanced, like magnified x number of points yeah okay so that that's what i want to say there let's get to the big bowl oh so, yes okay so i consume i'm going to show you guys right here can you see that Corey? it's perfect all right now so you can see here we have some new packaging i'm going to make you a bowl of the big bowl this is the new packaging right and you can see here Ooh. what does it say right there what does it say right there <laughs> you hang on you're you're gonna need a bigger bowl you're gonna need a bigger bowl and so you know what i couldn't agree more so you know what I don't have a bigger bowl, so I'm going to use this saucepan right here. <laughs> That's what I'm going to do, Corey. Okay. And so, and so what I'm going to do, and I'm going to count out for you guys how many grams. So I'm going to put in, so a serving size is half a cup. All right. I'm going to put, that's one cup right there. It might be a little bit more. One cup is 12 grams of fiber. All right. So right there, that's 12 grams of fiber. I got four different types of whole grains in there including oats, bite-sized shredded wheat, uh, a toasted wheat flake, and then also um, kind of like an Ezekiel 4-9 nugget, right? 
Um, and then I've got dates in there and I've also got, um, date dates and, uh, and little banana pieces in there. So the next thing I'm going to put in there, Corey, is I'm going to put some hemp hearts in there. Cause I always love, again, I'm going for 30 plus different types. Can you see the hemp hearts going in? I can see it. Yeah. So I'm doing, I'm doing a, a, a tablespoon of that. I'm also going to do, and a tablespoon of that, just so you know, is, is two grams. I'm also going to do now some chia seeds. Okay. Chia seeds are phenomenal, phenomenal source of fiber. One tablespoon is four grams. So I'm going to put in, that's one tablespoon. It might be a little bit more than that. I want you to know that I love frozen. I, so I'm just taking what I have here in the house. I only have frozen uh, fruit here. So I'm going to take some mango chunks and I'm going to do, that's probably three quarters of a cup right there of mango. I'm also going to do some triple berry. All right. These are raspberries, blueberries, and blackberries. I'm going to do that. I'm running low on that one. You can see that. That's all right. And then I'm also going to do some blueberries. All okay. Right. And uh, where's my, uh, oh, here I am. I'm upside down. Ah. All right. So there, so there's my blueberries. And normally what I do, guys, just so you know, is I'll throw these in a big bowl and then throw it in the microwave for just a little bit, just so um, the fruit is is not like bitter cold. And then, so I've got my 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 fruit, my cereal, my different seeds. Normally, Corey, I, I would put in some ground flaxseed meal as well, okay. but I don't have any of that here right now. And now I'm just I'm adding some um, oat milk here. Okay, you can see the oat milk going in there. So I'm gonna now I'm gonna add up for you how many grams of fiber I just got in this this sauce um, pot of Rips Big Bowl cereal. Okay, so in the I'm gonna show you guys here. Yeah, here we go. So in my mango, the mango I've got two grams of fiber. Okay. The blueberries I've got six grams of fiber. The mixed berry mix typically I would have between three quarters of a cup and a cup. That would be seven grams of fiber. The Rips Big Bowl cereal is 12 because I've got a cup in there. The oat milk is two grams. The chia seeds are four grams and the hemp hearts were two. That gives me 35 grams right, right there. And that's just my breakfast bowl. What? So I know, when I count, when I've counted out how many grams of fiber I get in a day, it's typically between 80 and 100 grams. I told this to Will Bolshewitz, and he gave me like rock star status when it came wow. to. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Well, so, <laughs> but here's the thing, you know, so, you know, um, these, we, we just came out with new packaging. You see how gorgeous that is. That's our banana walnut. Really cool. You see our date, our date. This is the old packaging, right? Yeah. And you can see how much more vibrant this is. The plant strong's bigger. The, 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 um, the world is, this logo is white now. And, um, and so again, this is what a fantastic way to start your day with like, literally, if you just do what I do, you know, 12 to 20 grams of fiber without blinking an eye. And, and what we didn't do is we didn't count our, our plant, our plant points. But if I did, let's see, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. I got almost 15 different plants in that breakfast bowl. Wow. Well, uh, listen, everybody, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to ask your permission. Okay. Would you like to know a special code that will save you 10% on your first order over at plantstrongfoods.com? That's my first question. Just answer yes in the comments. If that's the case, if not, we'll just end the show. All right. And then the second question I have for you is, would you like to know how to save 30% on one of the plant strong cereals right now? If you would, then just comment yes, okay? So I can know that that's something that you're interested in. All right, a lot of people are saying yes, clearly. So I think I think it's okay, and I've received permission to give you a discount code, all right? So um, there's two, two codes I want to mention. The first one is if it's your first time going over to plantstrongfoods.com, I want you to use the code STRONG10. Strong 10 is going to give you 10% off of your first order, anything you get in the store, all right? 
That's first and foremost. But right now, we are doing a special promotion, and it's while supplies last, guys. The truth is, we just sold out not too long ago of the two most popular flavors of Rip's Big Bowl, but they're back in stock. They're back, and they're better than ever. We have the Dayton Raisin on Rip's left hand, and on the right hand, we have Banana Walnut. All right? So these are in stock. Your Strong 10 will apply to that. But Rip, do you have any multigrain flakes there? You probably don't have them with you right now. No, right? I, I, let me, I bet I do. Okay. So right now, guys, I'm going to give you the second code. It is multigrain 30. All right. Now that's empty because Rip's eaten it all. But, <laughs> it's true. It's true. <laughs> but the multigrain flakes, uh, if you use that code, you'll get 30% off of a six pack. Now I know what you're thinking. What the heck? I'm not going to eat six bags of cereal. But the truth is there's two things. One, you can follow Coach Amy. All right, who's who's making absolutely crazy things out of this cereal, and you can blend it up. You can make pie crusts, uh, plant strong pies, amazing other pieces and other recipes that you can do. You can make your plant strong, uh, you know, bars out of these. We've made these amazing bars that we can travel with, and then in addition, you can freeze the bags, and they'll last almost. I mean, I don't know, rip forever, you know, uh, uh, for at least a good year. I've got, yeah, yeah. So listen, that's what we want to tell you. So I would say go get the Rips Big Bowl and, and then add, you know, these, these multi-grain flakes to your order and you'll be good to go. And uh, we're just so excited that you guys are here. We're so excited that you are with us. And we do have a handful of questions that I want to jump to. So our producer, Bess, is going to throw those questions up. Now, Rip, this has to be lightning round. Oh, okay. I, I, I get it. First, I want to say to, to Ted Geis, uh, you know, congratulations on a clear colonoscopy. And, uh, you know, I love that you love the cereal combination. Way to go. Way to go. All right. Uh, Nancy's question. How about uncooked whole grains, like in a healthy cereal product? Uh, like Rip's Big Bowl, right? Well, uh, sure. Absolutely. I just, just let's make sure that they are um, a whole grain product. And I have a whole lecture on how to read a label. M Corey, maybe we'll do that as one of our, right. um, as one of our uh, Facebook uh, lives. Yep. But, you know, there's certain words you want to look for. And if it's not one of those five, it, it's, it's, it's a poser. It's not a whole grain. Okay. So we'll just uh, tease, tease people with that for now. Yeah, absolutely. Um, oh, okay. Similar question from Anita. Cooked or raw? Well, you know what? So great question. So I think that the reality is that, you know, even raw oats have been steamed, right, when they've been rolled. So um, I actually would tell you it depends upon what your goals are. If your goal is to lose weight. I want you to cook those and I want the water to go in with the oats to reduce the calorie density even more. Okay. And so cooked oats, the calorie density is going to be down about 350, okay. 400 calories a pound. If you don't cook them, it's going to be more like, you know, a thousand. Okay. Awesome. Um, <laughs> uh, so I just saw someone else's comment. It's hilarious. Okay. Is a cup of raw oatmeal, 18 grams of protein. Oh, uh, no. Uh, no, 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 that, that, that is incorrect. So the, the amount, if you look at the, if you were to eat a cup of oatmeal, oatmeal, 18% of the calories are coming from protein, 18 are coming from fat and the remainder is coming from carbohydrates. Uh, the amount of protein in a cup is probably going to be right around six to eight grams of protein. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. What about almond, coconut milk instead of oat milk? Yeah, yeah Nancy, great question. So uh, we're not a fan of coconut products because of the saturated fat that's in there. And saturated fat, there's no requirement for saturated fat for us as human beings. And I think the preponderance of the scientific research actually shows very definitively that it promotes um, cardiovascular disease, insulin resistance, and uh, it's just not a, it's not a necessary fat don't buy all the hype around coconut. Hey, uh, Bess, our producer, can you throw up that comment from Diamond Tea Bar? That's the one that made me giggle. Y'all made me hungry. I'm munching on Rips All American Apple Pie Granola as we speak. <laughs> yeah, too bad we're out of that now. <laughs> oh, but thanks a lot, Diamond. You took it all. Okay, what about prediabetes? I'm getting mixed information from medical professionals about not eating oats, beans, fruits, and limit carb intake. But then I'm told to eat a rainbow of whole grains. I mean, look- no. they, Listen, Betty's got to check out that podcast. Well, Betty, you know, the pod, I just did a podcast with Cyrus Kambada. It, it, it hit yesterday. 
And, uh, you know, Cyrus and Robbie, these guys, um, they're both type one diabetics. They have really done more research and more of a deep dive into how people like yourselves and people living with prediabetes, type one diabetes, type two diabetes, how you can actually alleviate uh, and help really make it disappear unless you're type one, but type three diabetes and type two diabetes, you can basically um, get that A1C back down below 5.6, which is where you want it. And now you're no longer diabetic. So uh, the confusion is unfortunate, but the answer is whole plant-based foods. Okay. Good stuff. Um, uh, cause you, oh yeah. Diamond Diamond says bought it all. And of course, I also want to say, Corey, you know, um, because all of our foods are whole plant-based, doesn't matter if it's our chilies, it doesn't matter if it's our stews, it doesn't matter if it's our if it's our popcorn, it all has an abundant amount of fiber in it. So if you're looking to up your fiber game, literally all of our products will will uh, will address that. Like this popcorn, for example, you know, you just have one. I'm sorry, you have uh, you have four cups, which is easy to do with popcorn, especially when it's there's no added oil or salt. And you've just uh, given yourself <clears throat> four grams of fiber, right? While you're watching, while you're watching the latest Lord of the Rings. <laughs> hey, hey! Well, listen, everybody. We we want to say thank you so much for being here. Um, clearly, everybody that is here is uh, plant strong diehards. I mean, these these people are absolutely passionate about not only sharing what they're eating and what they're doing, but uh, I hope you guys are part of our plant strong community. Uh, it's completely free. Just go check it out over at plantstrong.com, you'll find the community. You can just jump in there or just say, hey, how do I get into the community? Again, it's completely free. There's people, no judgment. It's off of Facebook. It is a private community just for you. And we only let in, you know, the best people just like you yeah. guys. So, uh, and you know, I, I just gotta, I mean, I, I wanna be here for, hang out here for hours, like Diamond T-Bar, like what is type three diabetes? I want you to know that really, I mean, I think it's, kind of like what's going on with Alzheimer's and dementia and the beta amyloid plaques that are sitting between the, the different cells in our brain. So the cell pockets of our brain. So, I mean, everything is so interconnected uh, in the human body and whole food plant-based. I truly believe Corey and, 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 and the plant strong family that's out there listening, whole food, plant-based plant strong nutrition is a silver bullet that can take care of the manifestation of all these chronic Western diseases that are at America's doorstep right now. I, um, Su Suzanne, uh, Suzanne Boyer asked, what is the name of the Facebook community? Suzanne, it's not a Facebook community. All you have to do is go to the, the link down there at the bottom. It's community.plantstrong.com. And that's where you can get right in. And uh, Coach Amy's there. Rip is there. I, I'm in there. I'm having a blast taking pictures of my pizzas and everything else. So, Ted, uh, Ted, wear that kale t-shirt proudly, my man. Susan, I belong to Plant Strong too. I love that you belong to Plant Strong. <laughs> Woo! Holy cow! <laughs> All right, people. Listen, we're gonna slowly get out of here. We're gonna start Friday. I hope whatever you're doing, I hope you're making a buffalo cauliflower pizza on plant strong pizza crust tonight that's what i hope you're doing and uh i know what i'll be doing tonight is hanging out with my family out by the pool uh, while i can before it starts getting cold i feel like it's going to slowly start getting cooler you know so yep 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 all right everybody rip thanks for being here as always guys tune in next week we will have rip back um i don't i don't remember what our topic is for next it's week it's gonna be a great topic do you it's remember what it is it's, it's a spectacular one <laughs> Whatever it is. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you what it is right now. You ready? I'm going to I'm gonna look it up. It's going to be the last thing we do. And then we're going to close down the show. Next week's topic is going to be, what is it? It is the. <laughs> what is it? Protein? Are we talking protein? protein? We're talking about protein. All right. So join us and we'll we'll give you everything you need to know about protein. We'll bust and give you the info. All right. Thanks for being here, everybody. Much love to you. Happy weekend.